everyone all across india all across the world very good very nice welcome all of you i thoroughly believe that those who are punctual will definitely reap the fruits of it please all of you be punctual because all these are iconic sessions all these are phenomenal sessions that are going to help you in your life wonderful let's start let's start this beautiful journey so i am shruti kaura class i am an award winner at an academy let's go ahead the topic for today is how to talk to anyone part 4 so i am shruti kaura this is a glimpse of my award moving further my code that you are going to use is s kaura live use this code to get the discounts at an academy it's not only just a code to get the discounts it's a code which can actually change your life it's a platform if you join you'll get trained by a lot of lot of educators which will actually make your life so so worth and you'll feel that this knowledge whatever is coming to you is actually worth it so use the code as for a live not only to get the discounts not only to unlock the free live sessions not only to enroll for free for all the mock tests but to have a 360 degree improvement in yourself let's go ahead now as i shared with you there are two subscriptions at an academy one is plus another is iconic but to get the discount let's say you choose for 24 months or 12 months or even if for 6 months you'll get the code escora live you have to use the code here in order to get the discounts there are a lot of batch courses go ahead and roll yourself into it even now there is a 2 months cat subscription as well which is a new thing again don't forget to use the code escora live because at the end of the day at the end of the day nobody can ever steal the knowledge that is present here people can steal your gold and diamond and you know many other materialistic possessions but nobody will ever be able to steal the knowledge that you have so please multiply that knowledge try to multiply that knowledge every day with each passing day with each of the day that is passing right please make sure you multiply not just your gold or diamonds but your knowledge too anyway so don't forget to use the code as for alive next iconic subscription no doubt it's gaining a trend it's very very popular these days at an academy why because you'll get the benefits all the benefits of plus there'll be one is to one loud uh, you know live the clearing session by experts there is one is to one live concept discussion with the experts see one is to one right now we are studying in like 1 is to 40 1 is to 50 1 is to 100 but at iconic there'll be one is to one live mentorship by top b school graduates so book your slots again don't forget to use the code as for alive that is a code you have to use oh there is an offer a lot <laughs> the offer is buy 3 get 1 free buy 2 get 3 buy 24 and get 3 no doubt it is there <laughs> now comprehensive evaluation for your cat there are four free full length mock test you can enroll yourself for this these all are the test dates and test times so there will be an in depth analysis session by experts complete test performance report benchmark yourself against other cat aspirants and no doubt there will be high quality video solutions for every question go ahead it is an all india mock test for cat 2021 there will be comprehensive evaluation go ahead don't forget to use the code s cora live don't forget all of you can write this code this is the code for the youtube all of you can write in the chat box my code maybe your comments could help the other live learners all across the globe to get the discounts i know that all my students are really really generous and helpful god bless you all let's go ahead next Oh my god books that can change your life and i am damn sure i'm absolutely certain that these books have already changed your lives readers are always readers leaders are leaders are always readers 
this should be our slow uh, you know uh, this should be our slogan this should be our motto from now onwards leaders are always leaders perfectly fine i mind it right now i did something with you in the earlier session and those were some of the wonderful tricks now these are some of the super wonderful tricks learn a little jobletty goo go oh my god what is this jobletty goo i we have never heard of this term let's go crack what is this term this is the language of other professions maybe let's say if i am from an engineering background so maybe for me the language of other professions could be like jobletty goo for me if i am speaking it it making me sound like an alien <laughs> right but if an insider speaks that language he or she he or she will not look like an alien because he is an insider so you need to learn the language of other professions but the big question the million dollar question is that why you should learn this language why you should learn the language of other professions if you are an expert in your profession what's the need i'll tell you what's the need or rather lil lounges will tell you what's the need this will help you to tell others that even you know everything about their profession you know everything about their job their hobby this will actually let the other person know so please to whom so ever you are going to talk in the future let's say you have fixed an appointment you have a meeting scheduled so for you know related to that particular person you should be able to know his or her certain you know his or her profession related certain terms certain jargons this will really help you to actually sound like an insider the other person will feel that even you know about their profession although you don't belong to their profession or you have an altogether different profession now if your first question is about other person's job let's say you ask the big question what do you do right ideally what you should say rather than what do you do what did i tell you in the earlier session rather than asking the question what do you do you what how you should rephrase this question don't ask this question this could be a little embarrassing for some of the people so rather than that please write in your chat box what should be the paraphrased version of what do you do yes absolutely correct it should be how do you spend most of your time so that you know everything about his profession now how is this possible that you are in a different profession but you know how is it possible that you know everything about or maybe important terms of other person's profession how is this possible actually you have to become the sherlock holmes you have to become the detective oh my god is it like that in order to impress and influence anybody you need to become sherlock holmes as well let's go and find out once the conversation has started just keep saying yes or no right let's say you are a computer science engineer and you are meeting someone who is a civil engineer or a mechanical engineer or altogether not an engineer right whatever he is talking initially just nod your head just say yeah yes no okay sure perfect that's cool nice that's okay for example person one said i am working in an mnc you said yeah I heard I have heard about your company or I heard maine suna hai aapki company ke bare mein that's a good thing he'll feel good if you tell the other person that you know about their profession let's say how will this help let's talk uh, let's take another scenario then we'll talk about one more thing you for an interview let's say you have an interview scheduled in some company and you don't know much about that company but your friend or your senior is already working there please ask them you can also ask them the important details the important words the important vocabulary the important facts related to that company and tell them to teach you some of the language and some of the best opening sentences some of the best opening questions 
So point number one, it's important to know about other person's profession or job, how it will help you so that it will develop a trust between the two of you. The other person might feel that you know, even though you belong to a different profession, you know a lot about their profession, their job or even their hobbies as well. So that will make you sound more intelligent. Next, what is this technique? Bearing their hot button. What is this? Now, see, each profession has got some positives and negatives, some advantages and disadvantages, some merits and demerits, for sure. Now, for example, for instance, you're talking to a person who is objectively telling you the pros and cons. Let's say you talk to someone, okay? And he's very, uh, you know, uh, objectively, without getting a little biased, he's telling you the pros and cons of his job. And you are listening to him. Now, he has a very, he holds a very strong opinion about his job. If he holds a very strong opinion about his or her job, then you should talk to him. Why? Let's say you talk to someone and he is just talking related to his or her own job, profession. Now, that could be a little, that could get a little boring sometimes. But what you did, you understood that this person is holding a very strong opinion about his or her job and you started talking to him. Why? Because you know it will help you. If you're going to talk to an expert, it will be beneficial for you in the long run. In the future, it will be very good for you because people who hold very strong opinions, generally they know a lot about many things. Now, while talking to that person, what are the questions that you should ask? What is that you should try to know? Try to find out some of the burning concerns in someone's field. Like what are the issues? What are the hot issues? Because every industry, be it civil, mechanical, electrical, electronics, any industry, aerospace and defense, metallurgy, they have got some burning issues, some controversial issues, some hot topics which generally the outside world uh, does not know, but they want to know. But if you talk to these kind of people, you'll come to know the pressing issues of that particular industry. Now, next, what is this technique? Read their rags. Oh my God, what do we mean by read their rags? Actually, first technique I told you in the earlier session, instead of saying, what do you do? You have to, you know, paraphrase it. Then I told you about Jobly Goop. Now what was that? That was a little weird name. Actually you should know all about the other industries or the other professions jargons, vocabulary, pressing issue, burning concerns. This will make you sound trustworthy for the other person and they'll also feel that you are intelligent enough. That even though you don't belong to their field but you know it so better. Next, read their rags. What do I mean by read their rags? Actually, how to secretly know all about other people's life. Let's say, now you became an insider. You inquired about the hot issues, burning issues, or the vocabulary or the jargon of some other profession. Now, the big question is that. Secretly, you're trying to know about other person's life. How is that possible? Actually, if you want to know something about somebody, what is the best way to do it? Get friendly with the person. Do friendship with that person. So if you become friendly, let's say you feel that you would like to talk to some big shot and you don't know how and you believe that in the morning he goes for a job. So you also start taking some pain, get up early in the morning and start going out for jogs. Basically, while doing the jogging, maybe there is a probability again, you could get friendly with the person, you could have some sort of friendship with the person and this will help you to know everything about that person. Now, the next question is that if I don't want to know about a person, but if I want to know about a company, so in that case, read magazines, right? Pertinent to the industry, be aware of all the insider news. Of course, it should be pertinent enough. Clear customs is the next technique, right? 
earlier I told you be an insider, then I told you that if you want to know secretly about others' personal life, that do friendship with that person. Now I am telling you, what do I mean by clear customs? Actually, this is the biggest problem. We all face these problems whenever we travel to other countries where language is a problem. So how to talk when you are in other countries? How to actually make them understand how to speak? Let's go ahead and find out. See, whenever we travel to other countries, we really find it difficult to understand their language, their accent. Sometimes it really becomes difficult. Even English has got different accents. Same is the case. Same case goes for Hindi too. How to solve this problem? Whenever we have traveled to other country, different people have different language accents. How to solve this problem? One solution. Maybe <laughs> I have decided to, you know, uh, carry a translator with me all the time. I have decided to keep a translator. But that's sometimes not feasible for everybody. What is another solution? Is there any other solution? Yes. Make a list of all the important landmarks. The hostels, the hotels, airports, many other important buildings. Note down the details of all these important places, important landmarks in your own language. Now the language that you are going to listen there in a different country will be a different one. So before going to that country, make a list of all the important places, important landmarks, important buildings, restaurants, monuments, hotels. And note down the details in your own language. Then note down the important vocabulary and the other facts in your own language. For example, if you're traveling to, let's say, you know, maybe to some other country, let's take only Asian country. Or to some country where people don't know English. Maybe South Korea. Maybe to any other country. Right? So here we greet each other by saying Namaste. In English we say hello. So you find out what do they say in Korean language. What do they say in maybe you know Indonesian language. That is how make a vocabulary of all the important words. Like hello what is the price? How much is the price? Right? Bye. Take care. Which way should I go? Where is this particular hotel? Where is Park Plaza? So, this is one solution. There is one more. Try to get a book on cultural custom. For example, our culture is to do Namaste. The other culture that English follow is to do Shake Hand. Similarly, get a book on their cultural customs. Their taboos which they really don't want to talk about. Wherever you are visiting, it's very important to be culturally aware of the place where you are going, apart from making a list of all the important uh, monuments, buildings, landmarks. This is the best way to start. Point number one, either you could keep a translator, but I don't think that that's a feasible solution. Point number two, which is very easy, make a list of all the important landmarks and write down the details in your diary in your own language. Point number three, Whatever frequently used words you are going to speak or listen there, make a list, convert them in the desired language. Point number four, get a guide, get a book on their cultural customs, taboos. That is very important. Now, if you are planning to travel to Germany, get a guide on German customs. For example, hello, what, how do you say hello in Germany? Hi, bye, how are you? What's the price? How much is this? This is what I was telling you. Get a list. This will really help you. So for all of you, I know a lot of my students are migrating from the country because I take multiple exams. So for all of you who are planning to migrate, these tips will definitely come handy to all of you. Then, oh my God, now I have to do some bargains as well. I'm in a different country. How should I do the bargain? How will I come to know that? What is the exact price? of that particular item or product so how to find the right price for anything because we cannot unnecessarily bargain because that's like the you know thumb rule no actually whenever you buy something right you decide the price according to your budget and assumption you are buying something okay you are in a different country and you decided to buy some souvenir 
and you know how you will decide the price based on your own assumption you'll compare it with your own country maybe you'll calculate with the currency of that country and then based on your budget as well so you'll try to negotiate so if you want to negotiate right i'm telling all of you all across india if you are in a different country and if you want to negotiate over the price then start with the lowest bargain start with the lowest amount this is how it works don't feel shy that i am in a different country let me quote a higher price no the rule of the bargain still remains the same your prices are much lower when you know how to deal now what is the lowest price again a big question a million dollar question is that in that case what do you mean by lowest price actually do a research if you are going to buy something immediately either you can search on your google do some research on that particular item and then try to bargain the lowest possible bid wonderful so what could be the next option let's say if a particular vendor gets rough so in that scenario if you really want the item but the vendor the particular you know seller has got struck with that particular price so before any big purchase try to find several vendors try to learn you know from any one of them because if you are actually coming to a vendor with by doing a research by talking to different vendors this will really help you now the next part is really very interesting you meet someone you don't have time to you know do multiple meeting this is your first and last chance to make an instant repo the two of you should have you know gel each other they you should have an instant repo how is that possible how to get an instant repo come on we can't be rithik roshan or aishwarya rai in the first meeting how is that possible now this is possible be a copy class what do i mean by copy class actually if you really want to make an instant repo the class should match your class should match the other person's class how actually how to make them feel that you are also from the same class you you know you decided something that i would want to make a rapport with this person so what you have to do you have to make the other person feel that the two of you share similar rapport why because if the two of you belong to the same class then your way of talking walking eating smiling and sitting is generally same but if you want to match your class with the other person and you want to show that you both belong to the same class and so even even if even if some of your activities are not similar try to watch their activities let's say let's take a worst case scenario you want to create a rapport between the two of you but your sense of walking talking smiling eating is not the same so observe watch over their activities and then try to do the same that is wonderful for example if the other person is using two spoons while eating rice do the same there is no harm in that show them that you are also like them when in rome do like romans so that the other person gets comfortable with you in talking and will prefer to discuss even the other person will get a little comfortable you know if you show that we two share a same class the other person will also get comfortable he'll start discussing sharing his own things with you so match the class right this is very important next if you want to sell a product people are generally most receptive to those if they feel that the other person has got the same values which you have so when there is a match of values then also you can even do the business in that case as well then also you will be able to sell your product so match your personality to your product similarly if you want to impress a person there should be a class matching between the two of you you should make sure that you are doing exactly the same thing what the other person is doing in order to make the other person feel comfortable in discussing sharing his or her things with you next echoing what is this echoing earlier we did parroting 
Now the technique is echoing. What is this echoing? Actually, how to make them feel that you are like a family. Now, before this technique, you made them feel that the two of you share the same class. Now, in this technique, I am telling you to make them feel that you not only you share a class, but you are like a family. You are a part of their family or the other person is like a family to you. How to do that? That's very tough. That's almost, you know, next to impossible. Let's go ahead. See, when we meet someone for the first time, we and the other person, they feel different. Obviously, we both, have, you know, feel a little uncomfortable. We are meeting a stranger. We both are feeling uncomfortable, different. Then, during this time, right, try to know everything about other person's work. Obviously, how do you spend most of your time? What are his or her desires? Maybe a wish list or a bucket list or whatsoever. I'm repeating once again, when you have met someone, See, you have to match the class. Now, once you have matched the class, what are you going to talk? You have asked the question, what do you do or how do you spend most of your time? Now, apart from that, ask questions related to their desires, wishes. What do they want to do? Actually, you have to be with the person in their good and bad times so that even that person will be there in your bad times. This is the meaning of a family. So you have to signal, you have to indicate the other person that why I am like a family to you because I'll be there in your good and bad times. This is how family and relationship works. Unconditionally, they love you. It's not like a team where you have to compete, where you have to prove yourself. It's like a family. Unconditionally, they loan you. They love you. They'll support you. So this is what you have to show the other person that I am not judging you. Neither I'll disown you in your bad time. I'll be there in your good and bad time. And similarly, I expect that you will be there in my bad time. We are like a family. So it's a simple yet powerful linguistic technique. Everybody, earlier I told you, that your class should match. Then I told you what to talk, right? Then before that, I told you, don't use the line, what do you do rather? How do you spend most of your time? And once they have answered you, most probably try these techniques. Try to be an insider. Try to have a knowledge of the other industry, other professions too. And then use that knowledge for your own benefit. For example, if you really want to know secretly about the other person's life, then do a friendship with that person. Try out ways to get friendly. Perfectly fine. Let's go ahead. Then I just now I did echoing. Like earlier I did, uh, you know, parroting. Then we did echoing. Echo. Right? That is reverberation. Echo. These all are linked words. Like echo to the other person. That if I, I am like a family because I'll be there in your good and bad times. Then, potent imaging. What is that? Powerful imaging. How to really make it clear to them? What do I exactly mean by this? Now, is it related to how are we going to give this, you know, uh, the clarity or maybe to clear some misunderstanding? Is it like that? Not really. Let's go and find out. See, again, you're meeting some strangers, some acquaintance, and you want to tell them about you. You want that the other person should know about you. But, Unfortunately, the other person to whom you have met, he's only talking about himself. I am so and so. I did so and so. And he is not really interested in listening to you. Then what to do? I want that even he or she should listen to me. But he's only talking about himself or herself. He is not really interested in listening to you. What to do? Big situation, big problem. Actually, even... He starts speaking ill about you. Not only this, but he is not only speaking about himself, but he started speaking ill of you. Then it's high time. Come on. Raise your swords. <laughs> I know. On a lighter side, that was really on a lighter side. It's high time. You just correct that person. You need to correct that person. First, listen to them. Give your positive reaction on their right thoughts. In the sense, whatever he is speaking. 
listen to him or her. Secondly, whatever his positive thoughts are, whatever his thoughts you feel are right, whatever thoughts he is speaking correctly, give your positive reaction. But whenever you feel that he has spoken something which is absolutely wrong, then give your negative reaction as well. This way, when you will start expressing your point of view that this is positive, this is negative, this is neutral, even that person will start asking for your advice. So in this case, if the other person realizes that you are giving him importance, then to express your point of view would be much easier. What did I just say? I'll repeat. Please listen to me in simpler words. I met someone and I want that the other person should know or should ask questions related to me. But unfortunately, the other person is only speaking about himself. Even he sometimes speaks, he has started speaking ill about me or my family or my industry. It's high time we should correct that person. But how? Actually, earlier, while he was speaking rightfully, while he was speaking the right thoughts, give your positive reactions. But when he started speaking negatively or wrongly, give your negative reaction too. In this way, right? In this way, giving your point of view would be much easier and even that person will adopt or listen to your point of view as well because he knows you are speaking objectively. You are not just doing some flattery. You are not just another sycophant. Let's go ahead. Next one. Basically, sometimes you can use analogies from your listener's world, not your own. If, if he is not ready to understand your point of view, even if he still behaves in a little adamant way, then you could use analogies, right, from your listener's world, the, from that person who is speaking of, from his profession, from his world only, you can use analogies and make him understand in his own language. That's a wonderful thing. Then employ empathizers. What do I mean by this? Actually, earlier we tried to match our class with their class. Then we made them feel like a family. Then when they spoke negatively, we tried to correct them. Rather than fighting or entering into an argument, we handled the situation. We learned how to handle the situation. And now we want that he should not only ask questions about us, he should even understand our feelings. He should, he should be able to understand our feelings. So when we talk to someone, like whenever, and you know, if he is paying complete attention to what we are saying and replying in short answers, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, sure, nice, that would be perfect, wonderful, perfect, fantastic. So in this case, Express your feelings with more and better words. What do I mean by this? Actually, you, know, you can tell the other person that, you know, whatever you have decided, I believe it's correct. Tell the other person. Give your affirmation. Tell the other person that whatever he has decided, you are with him. You agree with his decision. Give them these kind of phrases. Make them, you know, speak these phrases. Very interesting. I'm sure you have taken the right decision. If you have decided, then it must be the right decision. Be proactive in showing the other person that you are giving these replies. How will it help you? Actually, this will help you to put your emotions in the most positive way. You're putting your emotions, you're making the other person understand your feelings in a very positive way. And you know what will happen in the other person? will definitely feel that you're trying to understand their point of view. When you have said, no, I'm pretty sure if you have taken the decision, it must be the right one. Very interesting. I believe, I believe you are doing the apt thing. It needs to be done right here, right now. So actually, when you speak in this manner, no, even the other person will feel that you are understanding his or her point of view. You are able to understand. Why? Because you're putting your emotions in the most positive way. Next, automatically correct empathizers. What do I mean by that? Actually, how to make them feel that all your five senses, your, you, you see, you hear, you think, you eat, 
you walk just like them. That was, we did the class match. But here, what am I doing? Whenever I'm meeting someone, if I try to tell them that even I have a same point of view, I see in the same manner, I hear or I listen exactly what you do. I feel or my feelings are exactly the same like you feel. So it becomes very easier for us to actually do friendship with the other person. For example, earlier I told you that if you secretly want to know about the lives of other people or maybe the person you, were, you want to, uh, you know, know. So in that case, you could go for a jog. But once you have gone for a jog, you both are jogging together, what are you going to talk? You have done a class match, but what exactly actually? You have to make the other person feel that even you see, hear, feel in the same manner like the other person does. And when that other person realizes that you too have got the same nature, then he understands you better, he'll understand you better. So what is the idea class? How this could be possible? This is possible only when the other person will actually be sure that you two have got the same nature. So he'll be able to understand you better. So make sure in that case you are there with the person in all his right decisions. Because people with the same mentality become friendly very easily. If the two of you share the same mentality trust me you two will become friends very easily next the premature v what is this premature v how can i adopt the v thing and leave the i what do i exactly mean by that i can leave the v thing and i can adopt the v thing and i can leave the i earlier also i told you it should not be centered around i me myself but what is this v thing actually if somebody says that I can do it and see you meet someone and he says he can do it but you cannot. It has got a very negative connotation. Try to change your conversational phrases in this situation. If you meet someone and if you feel that only you can do it but the other person cannot, don't say that I can do it and you cannot. Rather than saying hey we can't do it. You know that you can't do it, but don't use the word I. Don't use the word you. Instead of I and you, replace that I and you with the B approach. Please, it's a, not an old thing. It's a new thing. It's a new concept that rather than saying me, always say hum. Yes, that's we. Now, instant history. What do I exactly mean by instant history? You are being jocular in a positive way. I told you earlier as well in the earlier session that please you could be humorous but make sure your jokes should never offend someone. Make sure that you don't end up hurting other person's feelings while you are making a joke on his behalf. No, that should never be the case. So what do I exactly mean by being jocular in a positive way? See, when you meet a stranger... So you would like to make less a stranger in the sense search for some special moments when you meet someone, right? Again, there could be a little uncomfortable feeling. There could be a little different feeling. But you could be humorous. How? Believe, as I shared with you in the earlier session, that you are meeting an old friend. Hello, old friend. Now, do exactly the same thing as you are doing with an old friend, but Add a little, you know, element of humor into it. Why? Because if you add a little element of, an element of humor, this would be memorable moment for both of you. You would feel, oh my God, I met that person and it was really, he was really funny. Or he was really, he should be the talk of the town or he should be near me. That would remain memorable. Next. How to differentiate the power of praise? Absolutely correct. Very big, very important point. Kabi kabi tarif. 
flattery mein badal jati hai and aapko pata bhi nahi chalta so you should be able to distinguish differentiate the power of praise from the folly of flattery flattery folly praise power so you should be able to differentiate the power of praise from the folly of flattery how and why now what is this grapevine glory basically how you are going to compliment someone if you have to compliment someone how you are going to do it is it like that you are simply going to say you are beautiful right don't you think that the other person maybe your manager or maybe your senior or the big shot will think you are just uh, doing some flattery actually when you're complimenting someone make sure you do it in front of his friends don't directly go and say that compliment in front of that person let's say you meet the friend of that person right and and that particular person is not present right here right now in front of you so when you are praising about that third person in front of his friend so tomorrow when this friend will meet that you know ex person he'll talk about you that this person met you and you were praising about the ex person so in that case that will have more impact So while complimenting someone, make sure you don't do it in front of his friends or acquaintances. I mean, in front of him, right? Make sure you do it in front of his friends or acquaintances, so that when the friend of your friend will tell him that you are praising him, he'll never ever doubt you, because a compliment one hears. If I hear a compliment. directly from you it will not sound much exciting rather if i hear from somebody else that you were praising about me so we trust someone i'll i'll have all my doubts clear i'll trust you more so we trust someone more who says good things about us when we are not listening then someone who compliments directly so never compliment directly rather say good things or compliment someone when they are not listening why this could be the start of a healthy relationship yes this could be the start of a very healthy relationship so please never give compliments directly in front of anyone do it in the presence of his friends relatives acquaintances family and if you do it this way the person will never doubt you and this is the start of a good and healthy relationship perfectly fine next Carrier pigeon kudos pigeon why pigeon how to be a messenger of good feelings ah yes all across India pigeons on my screen <laughs> pigeons on my screen why because I am I am absolutely sure you you have you must have started thinking about pigeons you remember in olden time pigeons used to be the carrier of letters. they used to carry letters from one place to another so you should be a carrier of good news you should always be a messenger of good news positive news what does that mean how every time you could be a messenger or a carrier of good news how is this possible let's go and find out see whenever you hear something good about someone right you heard about your friends praise or compliment go to your friend immediately go to your friend and tell him that he or she was praising you this will make your relationship grow stronger this will make your relationship you know much better because you are always coming with the good news your friend will feel that whenever you come it's always the good news that you deliver so be like a pigeon or a messenger of good news next implied magnificence wow this is a wonderful word magnificence actually <laughs> how to make people feel that you admire them tell the other person that you admire them but how again again it's you know coinciding with the fact that if you tell them you admire them it could be it could come under flattery earlier you followed a technique you didn't praise someone in Uh, directly in front of that person rather 
you complimented him in front of in front of his friends family or relatives but here again you have to make the other person feel that you really but now you're making him or her feel how to do that see while talking to a stranger speak some good and positive lines about him that you have got a dashing personality uh your smile you know makes my day you actually whenever you laugh i feel that if you know a god is showering you know thousands and you know millions of roses on me you are the sunshine of my life so give these lines but don't overdo them otherwise it will look flattery you're talking to someone maybe stranger maybe acquaintance maybe anybody so don't overdo these lines just speak one or two positive lines that you know your smile sometimes makes my day how you'll always look so innocent and honest so now the big question is that how to praise a stranger i don't know anything about that person i'm meeting that person for the first time how am i going to praise that person actually everybody has got some unique quality everybody let's say in the initial 5 10 minutes observe that person while observing if you notice well and good if you did not then maybe try to use some generalized lines next accidental adulation adulation is excessive admiration so how to become an undercover secret agent if you really want to win somebody's heart how to become like an undercover agent it's called as accidental adulation that is adulation is excessive admiration how to do that let's go ahead and find out whenever you talk you know try to take up those topic which are closer to other person's heart he or she feels emotionally connected to those topics so if you really want to win somebody's heart always take up those topics which you feel the other person is emotionally connected to why why you should do that actually if you take those topics you are actually you know kind of evoking the positive cherished memories of that person he enter into a different world even though he or she is present with you right here right now in front of you but if you evoke these positive memories by you know taking up those topics which the other person feels emotionally connected to he or she will enter into a different world he'll start sharing beautiful old memories even with you and it's a perfect way to start a relationship be it professional be it personal up to you now killer compliment what is that killer compliment <laughs> that you should be giving again all these things are going towards the fact that you should be able to discern you should be able to distinguish you should be able to differentiate the power of praise from the folly of flattery it should not look flattery so how to make them feel that you will never forget them generally the major question is that people have in their mind is that you are meeting them right here right now you will remember them only maybe a week or a two or a month or a year but people want that you should never forget them through your life and you want to convey the same feeling to the other person that today i am meeting you and i'll never forget you throughout my life how to give that how to give that hint to the other person now what do i exactly mean by killer compliment search for that one attractive specific and unique quality he or she has search for that one attractive specific and that unique quality he or she has maybe his or her voice eyes dressing sense maybe way of talking nature smile there could be so many things you know polite nature generous nature anything so search for that one attractive specific and unique quality he or she has if you really feel for someone 
and you would like to have that person in your future. So please give them a killer compliment. Start praising. This will lead to a good relationship. At the end of the conversation, look into the eyes, say their name and deliver the compliment. For example, let's say if you want to say to someone that your smile makes my day, right? So whenever the conversation has ended, look into the eyes of the other person like I am looking into your eyes. See, I am looking into your eyes and I will say, hey, Joe. I think your smile always makes my day. So when you speak, when you say the compliment, when you deliver the compliment in this manner, this will have much more impact. Next, there are certain rules of the killer compliment that you should follow. Always deliver that compliment in private. It should not be in a group. Second, your killer compliment should not look like a flattery or as if you are trying to flirt or something like that. It should look credible. You should feel that from inside. Lastly, only one killer compliment per half year on each recipient on a lighter side. There should be only one killer compliment. Either your voice is so soothing, your thoughts are so generous. Your thoughts are so peaceful. Whenever I am in your company, I simply enjoy or I learn whatever. But there should be only one killer compliment that took per half year, six months on each recipient. That's up to you. Then the little strokes. What do I mean by little strokes? What is that? Actually, if you are with someone, don't praise them in a verbose style. Don't use too many words. Use short words. Well done. Nice job. Great show. Good. That, that was wonderful. Take your bow and shoot the stars. Actually, this will help the people around you to know that how much you appreciate them. Use verbal little strokes. You know, giving a compliment to verbose, it will spoil the ultimate sanctity of the compliment. Small, short, marvelous magnificent, fantastic, terrific. This is okay. This is justified. Next. The knee jerk. Wow! <laughs> How to praise with the perfect timing. Ah, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Opportunity knocks at the door. You have to open the door at that time. If you keep sitting and the opportunity knocked at the door, it will knock at the door only once. And if you keep sitting, the opportunity will go away. So how to praise with the perfect timings? The golden opportunity is knocking at the door right now. <laughs> whatever knowledge, whatever information I'm sharing with you, it's a, it's a golden opportunity for all of you. So open the doors of your mind and allow this knowledge to enter to your mind. Next one. See, don't wait for the opportune moment. You must praise the people the moment they finish your feet. Right? Surprise them with all the spot admiration. Don't wait too much. Knee jerk. Wow. Why? Because after all, everybody loves admiration. Don't expect them to, you know, hate admiration or to stay neutral. Yeah, everybody loves admiration. Next. Now, the big question. I admire him or her. I want to get that compliment back to me. So, how to get that compliment boomerang so how to make them compliment you you complimented them now you want these people to compliment you how to do that actually if somebody praises you then you should also immediately respond with something like hey that's very kind of you for example you said to someone oh your smile makes my day you're the most generous person i have ever met so in return, the person or you could also say, obviously the one who is a receiver of the compliment, he or she has to again say this compliment, that's very kind of you, that's very sweet of you. For example, person once said, hey, you are an intelligent person. So in return, the second person has also said, you too are a very quick-witted person, you too are a very quick-witted man or a woman or a female or a girl. So let 
compliments boomerang right back to the giver. Compliments should boomerang right back to the giver. This is how, see, I'm creating a boomerang effect. Next, tombstone game or generally we don't have, you know, tombstones in our culture. So in that case, I would love to say that how to make your loved one feel you are the partner for life. In that case, see, most of the time, we don't express our feelings. We assume that the other person knows that we hold a special place for the other person in our heart. But no. No. It's very important to express what you feel. Encourage your partner in the right things. Tell them that you are the most kind-hearted man I have ever met. You are the most, you know, beautiful female I have ever seen. You are the most generous person I have ever met. So express your feelings in words. The people you love the most, your mother, your brother, sister, wife, anybody. Express your feelings in words to the people you love the most. But what is important is to make them realize that you really love them. Tell the line, I love you so much. So make sure, make sure you make the people in your life feel special. Ask people what they would like to engrave on their tombstone. So in our culture, we don't have tombstone. You can tell them that if somebody has to write your biography, what is the line that you want those people to write for you? Then keep that line in your memory, but don't mention it again. Then when the right moment is there, when you feel that today there is some special occasion is there, then speak that line that I appreciate or I love you for the line that he or she has given you while you ask that question. So fill in the blanks with the words he or she gave you before. Next, talking gestures or how to sound more exciting in telephonic conversation. Now, telephonic conversations are very, very misleading. Why? Because when we talk face to face, it's very easy for us to, uh, you know, gauge the emotions, to understand the other person. But on phone, it becomes very, very confusing. So what should we do on phone? There are very high chances, like in the case of Corona, it's not possible. Most of the borders are closed. You have to talk on phone sometimes, if not video call. So maybe in that case, try to be expressive on phone. You should have the ability to turn your gestures. Like if I'm talking to you, I'm doing these gestures. Okay, fine. So you, on the phone, you should have the ability to turn these gestures, right? To turn these gestures into sounds and words. If you want to come across and as engaging as ever on the phone, if you feel that the other person feels that you're very engaging, then you should have the ability to convert these gestures into sounds and words. And for this, you have to believe that the person on phone is sitting in front of you. Now, the big question is that, how will you convert these gestures into sounds and words? Actually, assume, suppose that the person who is on the other side of the phone, he is actually sitting in front of you. When you believe and you assume this thing, this will help. So I'll take the next technique, name sure, that is how to sound close, even if you're miles away, there are long distance relationships, there is corona, there are lot many things, which is keeping the two of you, you know, far away, miles apart, but still, how to sound close, that I'll take it in the next session, this is Shruti Kaura, signing off for the time being for today, we'll discuss more such interesting things, which will enhance your personality, which will help you in personality development. You will feel very comfortable in meeting the strangers. Whenever you will feel, you will speak. Whenever you will speak, you will speak to impress your relationships. Be it professional, be it personal will improve. I'll post the assignment in the comment section. Till then, take very good care of yourself. Adios and gracias. Bonnie Nui. All right. Goodbye.